All right. So let's, let's look at it. You see, the thing is that in doing a performance-based design to satisfy a certain performance level has a one-to-one -one correspondence with what we already know how to do. For instance, if we are, say, interested in, in doing a stress check of a steel structure by the codes that we currently use, what do we do? Okay? We choose the design code and the earthquake loads. Right? That's what we do. We then decide what parameters we're going to check, like maybe the combined stresses. If we have a concrete structure, we get the allowables with the fee factors. If you have a steel structure, we have the allowable stresses. We do an analysis, we calculate the stresses we, with load factors, and then we calculate a ratio between the actual stress and the allowable stress, and if that ratio is less than one, our structure is satisfied. That's how we do when we're doing a stress analysis of, say, a steel beam or a concrete structure, right? Something that we're very, very familiar with. We calculate the forces from the earthquake loads. We know what the capacities are. We have the, we have the applied loads and we have the capacities and we calculate a ratio between the applied and the capacity and that gives us a stress ratio. And the stress ratio has to be less than one, right? That's when we do a stress analysis. Now, when we do, and that's what we call a strength-based design. When we're doing a deformation-based design in performance-based uh, environment, we do exactly the same thing, but this time around, we're not talking about stresses, we're talking about deformations. Because the allowables that we have, which are the capacities, those are in terms of deformations. That much rotation, that much strain, that much shear strain. So what do we do there? We choose a performance level and the design loads from ASC 41. The design loads could be in terms of a dynamic time history analysis. It could be in terms of a lateral response spectrum analysis in the form of a pushover analysis, which we'll talk about. We determine what is our capacity measure. It could be drift, it could be axial strain, whatever. It's a deformation parameter, whether it's a drift, shear strain, axial strain, moment rotation. 